Hey, this is Chad White, Amnesty International House of Pancakes, here in the Fortress of Solitude to tell you about the Roland DAP-2. The Roland DAP-2. Let's have a quick look at that Bambino. An expensive multi-effect. I picked this up for about $43. I believe uh, tax was added to that, so I got it for about 43 or, uh, well, 45 or 46 including shipping, which was thrown in. Uh, purports to have a tube screamer overdrive. It's not. It's a good volume boost with decent gain, but this sounds nothing like a tube screamer. I can guarantee you that. It does also have an ensemble course, which is a very nice CE2 kind of thing with the depth uh, modification here and a modulation delay, which is an especially nice touch. I have no idea what this purports to be. I'm assuming it's supposed to be uh, maybe 750 milliseconds, but I'll tell you right now, this thing will go far past that. This knob I would say is only going to be a clean delay up until you have the little knob at about 9.30 or 10 o'clock. After that it gets lo-fi, but I have clocked uh, well in excess of two seconds on this sucker. Now mind you, the delay is lo-fi once you get that far out, but it is gorgeous and it is a modulation delay so you can make it work for you. A uh, little headphone jack, nice touch, and the volume which does add a bit of a boost. Uh, this is a true bypass, so this does not have a buffer, but it does a beautiful job. Uh, I am running into a Vox AC30 Custom Classic with EL844s, which allow me to get nice, a nice overdrive at a lower, uh, lower volume level. Guitar I'm running through is my Les Paul Special Double Cutaway. It's blue. I love blue. And I'm going to be running through a Sound Tank Classic Metal, which was Ibanez's $25 Rat knockoff. And the tone knob does work much like the filter knob and the Dan Electra Fab Overdrive that I got locally at a music shop for 10 bucks and 50 cents used. It's missing a knob on the level, but everything works like a charm and it sounds great. Let's put this Bambino down. I'll give you my fundamental tone and then we'll get to work. You'll notice the artwork, by the way. Let's see if I can get this to balance right. Balancing this on an office chair. I have zero production values. I don't even have a theme song yet. I'm picturing something kind of samba, you know, tips for the broke-ass musician. I don't know. We'll do the math later. Okay, here's my fundamental tone. God, I love Vox. Now, I'm not ready through anything on the roll-in yet. I am going to hit the classic metal. Uh, I have the level cranked and the distortion level fairly high, about noon. Um, I've noticed with both of these pedals, they don't go too far above unity gain. They go a little bit so they stand up and not a whole lot. Here's the classic metal. Okay, that's pretty intense. Here's the fab overdrive. to the overdrive first. It's going to be on the low setting. I'll tell you why. Because the high setting is a jolt and a half. Okay. Now, I have the level and tone crank and the gain all the way down. Gain is now, I'm sorry, tone is now at 10 o'clock. Level cranked as I said. Before, after, so it definitely had some overdrive, but I would not call this a tube screen. Now here's where the fun comes in. Kick it into high and the volume boost is amazing. If you're running this into a Fender Twin, for instance, you're going to get a boost in volume. Mind you, the volume of the gain is all the way down. Now I'm going to put the fab overdrive on top of that. I am running single coil so you can't get around the door. Say down to 12 on the Rowan. I'm going to try the classic metal with the distortion all the way down. It's still going to kick in quite a bit. 
If you've ever plugged into a rat and turned the distortion down but kept the level cranked, you're still going to get some, some meaty tones. <laughs> to take off a little of the meat. All right. Now, where I have everything, now you can't see the knobs, unfortunately. Level and depth are at about 1 o'clock. Rate is at about 10 o'clock. I'm going to turn the rate down to 9 o'clock. I'm going to crank the level, crank the depth. Let's turn that volume down a little more. I got it down to 7.5 now. Let's clean up that tone. expecting. Let's go ahead and try the echo now. I have the level and feedback on again about one o'clock. The delay I have set for nine o'clock. This thing gets, I as I said, I, I, I can get a clean sound out of it up to about a second and a half, maybe a second and a quarter. There is some grit, but it works out beautifully. It is a musical, musical delay. I'm going to crank the level so you can hear the delay a little more clearly. That's at 9 o'clock on the delay. I'm now going to put it on about 10 o'clock. You hear the degradation begin on the second repeat. Actually, on that one, I heard it right away. We're well over a second here, however. Now let's add the modulation.
pretty noisy. So we put it back in about nine o'clock, which as I said is still still past a half second. I couldn't tell you exactly what. I don't have my stopwatch set up. But uh, you can use this with that longer lo-fi delay. Now I'm going to stretch that delay out and take advantage of the noise. Alright, so it's dirty right away. The little brochure says it sounds like a tube scrimmer, it doesn't, but it's good on its own. The chorus and delay are remarkable and unexpectedly good. And you can tweak the echo like you would not believe. It goes low fi but low fi is not necessarily a bad thing. You can make it work, that's the beauty of it. It is digital, but it has analog style filtering. The knobs light up nicely. Everything's running off a single power supply here with minimal noise. Got plenty of hiss and such from the chorus combined with just the system noise because it is going into a fairly cranked little box. Hope this helps you out here. I enjoyed this quite a bit myself. Have a great day. This is Chad White, Fortress of Solitude, located deep in the Amnesty International House of Pancakes. And uh, have a great day.